I want to start with an email I got that is just too funny not to read. A driver was stuck in, traffic, in a traffic jam on the highway outside of Washington, D.C. Nothing was moving. Suddenly, a man knocks on the window. The driver rolls down the window and asks, what's going on? Terrorists have kidnapped the entire U.S. Congress, and they're asking for a $100 million ransom. Otherwise, they're going to douse the whole place with gasoline and set it on fire. We're going from car to car collecting donations. How much is everyone giving on average, the driver asked. The man replied, roughly a gallon. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that is good. If you've not been with us, let me bring you up to speed a little bit. We're going through the life of Joseph. Joseph's life is, is divided into three big segments. Zero to seven, birth to 17, where he was uh, the, the, uh, the son of, of uh, Jacob's beloved wife, Rachel, who couldn't have kids. Leah had plenty of kids. He finally had one, and Joseph was the favored son. Uh, he had a coat, and, and that, that was, a coat was for guys who didn't work because they were part of the privileged class, and that did not go well with his other 10 brothers. In fact, they hated him. How bad did they hate him? And I joke about my brothers because I, I, I love my brothers. But how bad was it? They, first, they put him in a pit, and Reuben was going to go back and pick him up. But then uh, one of the guys said, what, what, why do this? Let's sell him. And so they sold him into slavery as a, on a caravan that was going down to Egypt. And then he gets down to Egypt, and he is falsely accused. He, he rises up because God honors him and blesses him and, and gives him favor, and he's in charge of all of Potiphar's house. And then Mrs. Potiphar... Uh, falsely accuses him and is unjustly put in prison. And we don't know how long that is. We do know it was at least uh, until he was 28, because at 28, he meets two guys there that are uh, part of uh, Pharaoh's uh, uh, cabinet, the butler and the baker. And they both have dreams. And Joseph's life was filled with dreams. He started with two dreams. That's part of what made his brothers hate him. That he said that the, the wheat's going to rise up, they're going to fall down, bow before me. And he said, we're never going to bow before you. Then the second one, the sun, moon, the stars. And Jacob said, are you telling me that we're going to bow before you? He said, I'm just telling you my dream. That's all I'm telling you. But I, at 17, you're probably telling it in a pretty cocky way. <laughs> and then uh, while he's in prison, the butler and the baker both have dreams. And uh, he, tell, he interprets the dream. And he says to the, to the butler... He said, in three days, you're going to be restored. The baker, three days, you're going to die. And sure enough, uh, three days later, they come to get the, the, uh, the, the uh, baker to put him to death and the butler uh, to go back. And he says, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he's, oh, yeah, no problem, no problem. But he was forgotten by the butler. And then two years later, Pharaoh has two dreams. And the two dreams were... Uh, troubling dreams to him. He said, I had a dream, and, and he, he couldn't find anybody to interpret it. He asked all of his cabinet, all of his religious people, and they said, well, tell me what the dream is. He said, well, there were seven fat cows followed by seven lean cows, and the lean cows ate the fat cows. Then there were seven uh, shocks of, 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 uh, of wheat, and some of your translations may say corn, but corn is the top of the wheat. That's what they would, uh, they would use to, to reap. Uh, seven, and then seven uh, blighted uh, sh shocks. And the blighted ones ate up the, the bountiful ones, so it was all forgotten. And uh, Pharaoh says, isn't there, isn't there anybody who can help me? And so the, the butler says, I remember now my sin. There's a Hebrew in prison, and he can tell you this. And so he told him, he said, two dreams are one. God, God gave you two dreams because it's from God. And God wants to tell you what's going to happen in the future so you can plan. There's going to be seven years of plenty followed by seven years of famine. And the seven years of famine are going to be so bad that you need to, uh, to, to, to do something because to, it's going to eat up all the good memories and all the good food. It's going to be gone. Then, Pharaoh said, and then uh, Joseph said, well, I suggest that you get somebody who's wise and can steward this and that you store up food in the plentiful years, so when the, the, uh, the, the, the famine comes, you'll have food for everybody. 
And so, sure enough, that not only did he say, okay, he said, I need somebody who's in the Spirit of God, and the Spirit of God's upon you, and you're the man. And he made him, he put a chain on him, gave him the ring, uh, put him on a chariot behind the, the, the Pharaoh, so he rode through the land saying, bow the knee. Nobody is more powerful uh, than Joseph was. And so this is now, he's 30 years old when he gets promoted. He gets married, has two kids, uh, and the first one was named uh, Manasseh, which means forget, that God has helped me to forget this. Second one is Ephraim, faithful. God is, is faithful to, to, to bring plenty into my life, blessing into my life. So now we pick it up at the end of uh, the seven years of plenty, and we're now into the second year of famine in, in the end of 41, and we're going through 42 today. Are you all with me? Did I catch you up in three minutes? Okay. And in 41, it says, 41, uh, then the seven years of plenty which are in the land of Egypt ended, and the seven years of famine began. And the famine was all over, uh, verse 56, all over. And everybody's coming to Egypt. So all countries, verse 57, all countries came to Joseph in Egypt to buy grain because the famine was severe in the land. Verse 1 of 42. When Jacob saw that there was grain in Egypt, he said to his sons, why do you look at one another? Go down to Egypt. Why are you looking at one another? Why do you think they're looking at one another? Because they're thinking, our brother's down there, and we sold him. And what would happen if, if we would bump into him or see him working as a slave? I mean, this, this, would, be, this would be terrible. And so they're, they're kind of looking. You know how you're in a room and people, everybody's looking around? And Jacob's saying, I see everybody. What's, what's going on here? What is going on here? But they don't respond. Because guilty people don't respond. Pe guilty people learn to live with the guilt. And guilt does three things to you. Number one, it damages personal relationship. When you are guilty, you, you don't look people in the eye. You, 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 you don't trust people because you don't trust yourself. And so you, you go through this. And, and in fact, uh, all of us deal with this. Uh, we're, we're now at tax time, and you know the U.S. Treasury has what's called the conscience fund. <laughs> Did you know that? And there are, uh, there's an, I got an article here on it. I'm not going to read you the article, but it, there are millions of dollars in the conscience fund because people do wrong and don't know what to do with what they've done, so they try to make it up. Uh, one, they, and they give a couple of things. You know, I, I once used a stamp twice. And didn't pay for it. I reused it. So here's some money. I once took 25 bucks in, when I was in the army, and I and here's 50 bucks back. And uh, the, the largest one that was ever given to them uh, was just a few years ago. A hundred check for not a check. They don't do checks, uh, but was cash. 155,500 dollars was sent by somebody who couldn't deal with the guilt. One, one guy wrote a, a, a letter and he said, uh, enclosed you will find $150. I cheated on my income tax. And I've not been able to sleep since I've done that. If I continue not to be able to sleep, I'll send you the rest. <laughs> but guilt does damage to us in an interpersonal kind of way. And, and it... Uh, it, it uh, not only does it work on us personally, but it destroys confidence. God wants us to be reconciled to him. And part of reconciliation is making sure that I'm right with him and with everybody. Because it'll affect uh, how I deal with people. Uh, it'll affect uh, how I respond in, in my own life. Uh, in fact, I remember when our kids, I'm not going to tell you which one now, but uh, we used to have a, an oak coffee table, kind of an oak oval coffee table and uh, Marsh and I were gone somewhere we had a sitter and we came back and the, the coffee table was all full of magic markers <laughs> and so realizing that you know it's, it's just a coffee table and uh, I said to one of my boys I said uh, 
And now he's got magic marker all over his fingers <laughs> and on his face. And I said, were you playing with, the, with these marking pens? He just kind of shrugs his shoulders. I'm not, that's not good enough. Let me ask you again, and I'm pressing him, not because I'm angry, but because he needs to be free. I said, did you do, did you play with the markers, and is that marker on the coffee table because of you? Here's what he said, no. <laughs> now we're going to the next level because lie. There's only one liar, and the father, father of all lies is the devil. Now we're dealing with something spiritual. So I had to take him down and say, look, I'm not mad at you, but I will not let you live a lie and let you live saying that you didn't do something that I know and you know that you did. Now, did you do it? Yes. And then I hugged him and prayed for him. But when you're guilty, when you're guilty, we, we do so many things uh, to try to just cover up because it, it impacts us in such a personal way. And, and, and it does such tremendous damage to us. And it keeps us stuck in an incident or something that's happened in the past. Guilt keeps me in the past and stops me from moving forward because I'm more focused on something that was said or done to me or something that I said or done. And so I'm stuck in the past and I just, for whatever, I can't break free, which is why uh, uh, Proverbs says, he who covers his sin will not prosper, but he who confesses his sin uh, shall receive mercy. And the Lord wants to extend mercy. But he wants us to come to the place where we will acknowledge that there's something wrong going on here. And this is why chapter 42 is all about reconciliation. Because I think Joseph, Joseph was fine. I mean, he named his son uh, Forget Manasseh because he helped me forget and fruitful because I've been dealt bountiful things. But there's that little sn sn snag, and that's my ten brothers. My ten brothers are, st are, are still there, and... Uh, 21 years, remember how old he was when we first introduced him to me? He was a handsome hunk at 17 years of age, and now he's made prime minister at 30 years of age, and now we've gone through seven years of plenty, and now we're in the second year of lean, and these guys come down because they're out of, his brothers come down, and they're out of food. So let's, let's pick up the story, beginning in verse 6. Now Joseph was a governor over the land, and it was he who sold to, to all the people of the land. And Joseph's brothers came down and bowed before, before them with their faces to the earth. Verse 7, and Joseph saw his brothers and recognized them, but he acted as a stranger to them, and he spoke roughly to them. And he said to them, where did you come from? And they said, from the land of Canaan. And Joseph recognized his brothers, but they did not recognize him. Because he was, you know, they're all bearded up, and they're dressed, you know, Jewish, and and he's, he's now Egyptian. He's been longer in Egypt than he was alive in, with his father in Canaan. So um, he said, well, you, then he remembered. Then, then, then Joseph, verse 9, this is a key verse. Joseph remembered the dreams which he had dreamed about them. And he said to them, you are spies. You've come to see the nakedness of the land. Joseph remembered his two dreams in chapter 37. I think after dreams don't happen for a long, long time, you tend to dismiss them, but God doesn't. He had two dreams. Two dreams were the same dream, and they come from God. And it was, it was a picture of his brothers bowing before him. And now here he is at 38, seeing his brothers bow before him, and he remembers. He's, this is an aha moment. This is when the Holy Spirit is giving insight. This is what I was talking about way back when, before you went through all of this. Because you've got 0 to 17, you've got 17 to 30, which was a difficult time, a challenging time. And he's in prison, he's, a, he's in a pit, and, and suddenly he's now on top of the world. And he's, he's in his late 30s, and things are looking good. But all along, he has processed this with the Lord. He had a great attitude and a, and a great faith, and so he's processing this right. But his brothers had never processed at all. And so now he is trying to, to get them to the place. The Lord's trying to get to the place where reconciliation happens uh, in people's lives. Uh, verse, verse 15, in this manner you shall be tested by the life affair. So now he swears, by the life affair, uh, you, you're going to be tested to see whether you aspire or not. Send one of you and let him uh, bring your brother. Now his brother is his only full brother. That's Benjamin. 
And that's the one when, when Rachel gave birth to Benjamin, she died giving birth. And that's between Jerusalem and Bethlehem. She's, she's buried there. And uh, bring your mother. Bring. He's, not, he's, he's, he's speaking through an interpreter, but he's speaking uh, Egyptian, and uh, they speak Hebrew. Bring them, or, 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 or uh, if there's any truth to what you're saying, or else by the, by the, by the life of Pharaoh, you shall, surely you are spies. So I put them together in prison for three days. Now, why did he do that? Well, so far, you know, uh, reconciliation is personal, but it's a process. And Joseph already worked through this process. The process that he's now working in the brothers is first hardship. There's famine. And we, we, we're just not living, you know, the way we want to live. Secondly, is this governor who is speaking and doing harsh things to them. And they're not used to that. This is, these are Jacob's boys. And they're, they're well off, you know. They don't, they're not we're used to be treated like this. And this guy is accusing him of being spies and saying, you, you're, you're lying to me. Why did you come down here? And then the final thing was he put him in prison because there's no place like prison when you can't see or talk to anybody. You can just sit there, look at the four walls, and reflect and so few people take time to reflect. But Joseph remembered when he was reflecting how that made him think about the Lord and how he was going to respond in his own life uh, to the things. I, I, I let it go. I'm going to let it go. But the brothers had not done any of that. What did they do? Well, three things we do when we have failed. And everybody here has failed. Three things we do. Number one, we rationalize. Well, that was a long time ago. Or we minimize. Well, it wasn't that big a deal anyway. You know, it was a long time ago, but it was not that big a deal anyway. Are you okay? I'm okay. And then we blame. And we'll see what happens here uh, in this process because in verse 18, then Joseph said the third day, do this and live for I fear God. Now, first he was swearing by Pharaoh. Now he's saying, I'm a God-fearing man. And I'm, so I'm bringing you guys out here because I fear God and I want things to be, to be right. If you are honest, uh, if you're honest men, let one of your brothers be confined to your prison house, but you go and carry the grain for the family of your house. He does, he's changed a lot, but he doesn't know if they've changed or not. Now, how many people are the same as they were 21 years ago? Anybody? How about 21 months ago? I mean, we change. And so we tend to evaluate people based on our memory of what they were. And so now uh, Joseph's trying to process this for himself and with his brothers. So he said, uh, uh, bring your youngest brother to me. That's Ben. That's his only full brother. Uh, so your words will be verified. Then you shall not die. And, 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 and they did so. Then they said to one another, now they're talking in Hebrew. And they think that this Egyptian has no idea what they're saying. Here's what they're saying. We are truly guilty concerning our brother. For he saw the anguish of his soul. He pleaded with us. We wouldn't hear. Therefore, this distress has come upon us. We did wrong. We're guilty. We've not dealt with this ever. So God's dealing with us right now. We are guilty of this. Then Reuben answered, this is the third thing, blame. Didn't I speak to you guys saying this? Didn't, didn't I tell you, do not sin against the, the boy, for you will not, but you would not listen. Therefore, behold, his blood is now required of us. Verse 23, but they did not know that Joseph understood them, for he spoke to them through an interpreter. Then he turned away and wept. And then he came back again and took Simeon from them and bound him before him. Why Simeon? Well, I suspect that Simeon was one of the ones that said, let's sell this critter. Get him out of here. Uh, you say, how do you know that? Well, I don't know that for sure. I do know in chapter 49 when, when uh, Joseph is, is uh, or Jacob's blessing all the, all the kids that he starts with Reuben and said, you're like water, you're, you can't be counted upon. And then he goes down to the next two, uh, Simeon and Levi. He said, and you guys are cruel. You're just hasty and you're cruel. And so I think this cruelty is what God is. God is trying to redeem out of Simeon 
the cruelty. And so what he does is what happened 21 years ago. He takes Simeon and he binds him up right in front of the brothers and hauls him off. The same thing they did to Joseph. And now he wants to see how they're going to react. Because God is a God of reconciliation. It's personal to me, but it's a process. God puts us through all kinds of things, through hard times, circumstances, through hard people, and, and through just difficulties to see, to test us, to see if we're going to come out and say, yeah, I, I did the magic marker. It's on my hands. It's on my face. This iniquity is part of, a part of me, and I, I just need to come to terms with who I am and what I've done. So the third thing is reconciliation is pur purposeful, that he has a purpose in doing all this. And that, that is no, he, all, he knows now from verse 9 that God had planned on doing this all along. But now he wants to see where his brothers are. So they do the same thing. He reenacts this thing from 21 years ago with, the, with their brother Simeon, and he wants to see how they respond. So uh, then, verse 25, Joseph gave a command to fill their sacks with grain, and to restore every man their money and give it to them provisions for the journey. And thus they did for, for them. These the ten as they're going in this caravan back. So they loaded their donkeys with, with the grain and departed from them. And as one of them opened the sack and gave his donkey feed at the, at the, at the encampment, he saw his money and there it was in the, in the mouth of a sack. And so he said to his brothers, my money has been restored and there it is in my sack. Then their hearts failed because they're thinking, they're going to say, you ripped, you ripped us off. You, you stole this money. You gave us money and you stole it back. And they were afraid and they said to one another, who is this that God, what is this that God has done to us? This is the first time in all of scripture that any of the brothers acknowledge God. First time. Now, their dad had an experience. We know his dad, had, he had, went to Bethel and dreamed and the, the, the heavens opened up and the ladder, angels ascended and descended. But this is the first time. And see, God has plans for them. These are going to be the 12 tribes of Israel. And right now, they're the 12 failing losers. You know, they're just God. And so God will not let you stay in that. He wants to redeem that. And so he puts them in this situation, and, and Joseph puts that money in their sack to see how they'll respond, and the way they responded was, we're guilty, but, but it's accomplishing his purpose. What has God done to us? When the Lord works in your life, and he does, and if you're going through a tough time right now, or you're stuck in something that's been done, the Lord wants to free you up today. There are people here that have, are stuck because, I'll just give you some some things, just general things. I'm not speaking to anybody that I, of what I know. But uh, uh, you had an abortion. And you've never told anybody. And you're a Christian. And you live with this, this guilt of what you've done. And you've never told anybody. But this is just kind of boom, boom, boom. Just, and you're, you hurt. And what, I'm, what I want to do today is just like my son... You've got marker on your hands. Iniquity, that's what, that's what markers. You have markers show up in behavior. You get compulsive behavior. Uh, you get involved in drugs or alcohol or gambling or, or relationships. You go from relationship to relationship. The problem is you've never really dealt with this and been reconciled in your heart before God on what's going on. And so, and so he wants to deal with you on this. Or you've been through a divorce. And I'm not going to ask you to lift your hands, but just percentage-wise, there's a number of people that have been through a divorce. And uh, let me just say, divorce is both people's fault. So you can lay blame if you want to, but you know. You know, and they know. And now you fear, what if I bump into my ex at Target or at Walmart? So you avoid Target and Walmart. You know, you, you avoid things like that where you know that person might be because you haven't dealt with it. But God's purpose is to redeem this in your life. He wants to redeem, maybe you've gone bankrupt and you're embarrassed about that. Or maybe you've done wrong to a partner and that caused your, your business to go bankrupt and you feel guilty about that. There, there are as many things as there are people but I'm telling you what the Lord wants to do today is restore to you.
the joy of salvation and the ability to look up and, and look the Lord in the face and live a surrendered life because there's no perfect people here. There are none. And so the next thing that he does is he redeems us and gets us reconciled to him and then reconciled to one another. And that's the process that's going on right now. He's trying to reconcile with these brothers to see if they're the same critters that they were 20, if they're still the same mean old guys. And so he keeps the meanest of them, Simeon, and he hauls him off to prison to let Simeon think about this for a while until they come back. Well, then what happens? Well, we'll talk about that next week.